fast yeah if you break the fast may have little a key for me flash out a one thing for you know say and a jamaica the way i have a kitchen in your backyard i may have to johnny cake in a pan yeah but we want to talk to you about something we do a search from google we put in the word easter and we can show you what come up voila So, this is what I'm going to talk to you about. But I'm going to finish it a little bit clear first. Give me a minute. A few moments later. I put in the word Easter and I Google and a pure God egg and Easter bunny come up. And even though this is a small thing, it literally is a demonstration of the paradigm shift that is taking place as we speak. When we are grew up, and you hear say so his star come, Miss Pearly send out a black boy shop, go charge up the little hole, use care battery where she have. So she can connect up her little 8 inch by 8 inch black and white TV so she can watch the crucifixion story. When we are grow up on a Easter time, you always hear them sing, Lest I forget Gethsemane. How oh, I cherish the whole ragged cross. And every time you turn your head, you see in the cross. No. When our kids go online and they look for the word Easter, what are they being fed? Easter bunnies and Easter eggs. So we refer to them as generation of vipers. We call them ungrateful. And we tell them all the time how they have a clue of the luxury that they have. And they don't know what they miss. But in truth and in fact, you know, in Jamaica we always say, cow never know the use him till until him lose it. But what about the tailless cow? What about the cow we never born with no tail? You can't tell the children so they is taking them life a grand tridge when them don't even know what hardship is. So what happens now? We as adults have a responsibility. Remember when time for a granny and for a parents that call we generation of vipers. And we see them one day and now they are the helm, right? So if you leave the socialization of your child up to the media and all kinds of external influences, then the children are going to act accordingly because you cannot expect them to act on something that they don't know about. When we were growing up and them asked if you do a gesture as to how you talk on the phone, that's so how we always do. Because that's how we did no phone for stay. No, when you ask a picnic if you do a gesture as to how you talk on the phone, that's so how we do. Because that's what the child knows. We have a responsibility to tell them. Tell them. Sit down and talk to them. Tell them how we did have a cut exercise book and pencil in a two half and you carry one half till it done and then you get the another half to carry. Tell them about the time when you always get the half a pencil without the rubber and how you make your son done that the house so you can't get the half with the rubber. Tell them about the time when the rubber always done and you always have to use your teeth and bite on the piece of metal part to squeeze up the rubber from down in our part it fix down there so. Tell them about when you always use your yai teeth and bite the metal and peel it off at the top of the pencil to expose more rubber. Tell them about the time when you don't have no rubber at all and you use elastic band and sometimes you all are up use one chow or chewing gum. Tell them. Tell them, tell them about the time when sharpener did scarce commodity. The one or two people in the class where have them when you bark them say no, me not letting you miss it. Tell them about when you always have used one razor blade for sharp me your pencil or broken bottle in a sentence what we call a grass bottle. Tell them. When time me get all that rotted and me find out that's a stationary cheap, look how most them have to resuscitate me when I go in a shock. Tell them about when children always walk barefoot go to school. Tell them about when we used to carry a book in a ladder bag. Scandal bag. Because by telling them, by schooling them on these things, you are able to help them to appreciate what they have and to develop a sense of gratitude. Me I talked to my cousin last night. And one of the things we spoke about was the fact that little girls had to sometimes wait until after it dust up for beard. 
because they want a little skin to be exposed to the elements for hard sort of hand sandry we are past. We spoke about the fact that the little bit of water we are having at the bath bottom sometimes have to soap up yourself with the carbolic soap. You can hardly wash off yourself. But we were grateful. You know why? Because our parents and grandparents told us of the time when a one water they did have in the bath and the girls were allowed to wash first and when them done the boy them go go dip for them foot and wash and then everybody got them bed. So we knew even though I have one little drop of water at the bottom of the bath at the time we felt privilege because we have a own a beard in water we own a beard in rag we own a beard in soap tell them let your children know how you defy the odds and how you overcame adversities use your own experience to influence their understanding and their perspective on the world and to influence the culture of tomorrow do not leave the socialization of your child purely to external entities because when you do that whatever product they give to you in the person of your child you have absolutely no choice but to accept that yeah